what I want to do with Pork U is really kind of dig in a little bit here and there about how pork touches every different community. And you know, here at La Palma's Mexican Tessin, it's like a home, it's like a, a home away from home for a lot of people that live in this neighborhood and in the Bay Area. They come here, they feel like they're back in a classic Mexican or Latin American market at home. It's one of a kind, it's very unique. And this, this particular place, to me, I wish there were more. Here at La Palma's Mexican Tessin, pork is just a major, major part of Latin foods, whether it's El Salvador, Mexico, the entire of Latin America. And I wanna really focus on what they do, and they do really, really well here. And I think this has been here for over 30 years, and it's family run still. And you know, to see people make tortillas by hand, pat them down on this big black iron griddle, that's magic. And you know, the, the El Pastor being a major staple of it, all the way. And this is what I came here to taste. Hi, how are you? Hi, Chris. How are you doing? I'm good. It's Welcome good to see you. To La Palma. Good to see you. Thank it's you very much. Time. I know, I know. This doesn't exist anywhere else. The chicharron, yes. I mean, chicharrones yeah. are like a phenomenon right now. Yes, they are. Chicharron is uh, a mixture. It's pork belly, classically, and it's a mixture of skin, fat, and meat. And now chicharrones have been taken to new levels. There's skin that's been seasoned and then let to chill, and then it's cut and fried. This has been a part of Mexican culture forever. Oh, forever. It's amazing. You have so you have three styles here. You have that's skin with meat. Skin with meat. That's no skin, and it's all meat. It's all meat. And then this is the skin with fat. 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 Which is which is, is your this favorite? Is a little more I love the skin with meat. Okay. It's the crackly part. Yeah. Just the crunchiness. La Palma has created a home away from home for a lot of people who have immigrated to you know San Francisco. This is a second Mexico. You're providing a service for the Latin community in, in the Mission District that, that you're giving them a taste of home every single day. Right, every single day of the week, seven days a week. We make um, uh, huaraches, we make gorditas, we make pupusas, and we also make the masa, the corn. So you're basically home, away from home, for this entire neighborhood. And for the Bay Area, yes. And then you have un garbacho, which is me who comes here and you know is falls in love with well, it. Well, we're blessed. We have a very mixed clientele now. It's really changed in the last four to five years. Where you know we have a great mixture of people that come in. Pork, pork transcends pork all cultures. Sure does, yes. And that's what's pretty magic. And that, that's what I'm here to see. So, let's, can we take a look okay, at the kitchen? Come on back. Come okay. On back. Thank you. This is what built the business: the handmade tortilla, the masa. So sometimes we have three ladies. In the past, we've had four. And it's all done, it's all handmade product. The actual, the black steel that they're cooking on, you rarely see those anymore. That big oh, the slab. Uh -huh. That's a relic there. That's, I mean, that's a that's a piece of art. That definitely is, we keep it going. How many do we make in a day, 5,000? Yeah. Thousands, like, like, 5, like 10,000? Maybe, I don't know, about some days, 10. You guys are a tortilla factory. So Pretty, a small tortilla factory, but yes. On top of everything else. You know, trying to make those, you know, masa tortillas, I've tried multiple times. I was hoping that this time I could finally get it right, but it's a feel. It's having enough water, but not too much water, so it doesn't stick to your hand. And it's about patting it enough, but not patting it so much that it breaks and tears, like just like I did. I made holes in mine, mine were a mess. That's not a very good... That's a chiquita. That's a chiquita, yeah, it's... There's mine. Not, I'm not doing so good. But see that? She just, like, gets right in there. Yeah. She's not even afraid. Just. Boom, put your hand right down there. You can walk down the street, you can go to the meat store, you can come here and get your masa and your tortillas, you can go next door and buy your fruit and your vegetables, and you can go home and make a meal. And it's a it, it's, it's very family oriented area. It's like a family in here. We are, we are. We're very, we're very close, and there's quite a bit of us, but we are very close. This is Rosa, this Rosa? is Chris. Hey, Chris, nice to meet you. So, what are we making today? Al pastor. Al pastor, perfect. What do we do? Vamos a cortar primero la carne, carne de You want me to cortar? Yeah. Okay. El pastor is something that I always love to have. So now I'm going to get a little taste, but also a little bit of instruction. Um, they take the pork and it's cut into small cubes. Bueno? Más delgadito. Thin. Más thinner. Uh -huh. Wow. Más bueno? Sí, está bien. Okay. So she's been here for how long? It's been a while. We have her and another gentleman. Yeah, they produce everything. So they're the team. It's like they're a team. I mean, just, just like that. Very like graceful cooking techniques, very simple. She's, she's very good at what she does, she takes her time. 
she makes sure it tastes right. Because I can never make it as home as well as I have it here. It's good. Thank you very much. They didn't season the meat because the seasoning came from what I call the magic paste, which was the pasilla salsa. Ooh, that's good. Oh my goodness, so bueno. I mean, this is unbelievable. This is what I call magic right here. Thank you. So this, this, is... this changes the whole dynamic. We took the El Pastor and we put it on a huarache, which is a tortilla filled with, with uh, black beans. And then, you know, the pork with the tomatillo salsa with serranos and jalapenos, and then some cabbage and cilantro and fresh onions, and then that beautiful pineapple napped over the top, and a little bit of queso fresco. Talk about perfect balance. So here's the huarache. I get to eat? Okay, cool, that's it. I'm, <laughs> I'm happy now. Yeah, look at me, I'm making a mess. Mmm. Nice balance. Works really tender. Sweetness of that pineapple. The best part for me is what I like to call the magic paste. Those chilies and the vinegar and the cumin. I mean, if you guys weren't sitting here with cameras in front of my face, I'd shove it in, but. All right, you got your masticating moments. Move along with the camera. We don't, you know, say make for the whole day like a lot of, of restaurants do. You know, and if we are we're out, we tell the customer we're out. Give I've us, been here. Give I've us been that guy. Give us 20 minutes and we'll make it for you. You, you know, know what? But that's, that's what I think is so great. It's like, I've been here. I've been that guy that's like, I'm sorry, we're out today. And I'm okay with that because I learned to try something else. Pork, it's a predominant meat that's readily available. And it's very uh, accessible for everyone in pretty much every culture. There's something to be said for technique and craft whether it's making a simple tortilla, or whether it's making pasta, or whether it's making a sausage. All three are different crafts, and as you practice them more, you get better at them. But th what they're doing here is very special. Subscribe to Hungry and feed your food obsession.